This is BTEC Tech Award and Enterprise Component 1 Learning Aim A Topic 1 What is an Enterprise? For your assignment, you need to look at two different businesses. And today we are going to be looking at one business and looking at Topic 1 What is an Enterprise? Now, the business that we are using is Hook and Sons. They produce raw milk here in Sussex. Now, if you want to find out more about this, please research on hookandsons.co.uk. And even better, they have made a film about this business. It's called The Moo Man. It is available on Amazon. There is a website called mooman.co.uk. Use these resources well. What should you include in your assignment in this section? Now, we will be looking for whether the business sells good services or both, obviously with evidence, <clears throat> what the gap in the market that they found was and how they found it, who their competitors are and are there any substitute products we need to be aware of and how that affects the business, how they attract new customers to them, how they retain existing customers, what the role of customer services in retaining their customers, and what reasons are there that enterprises like this can fail? Hook Farm was started by Phil Hook um, as a tenant farmer a long time ago, back in the 1970s. He was later joined by his son, Steve Hook, who uh, predominantly runs the business today. Um, their farm is situated on the Pevensey Levels, which is a site of special scientific interest. So it's not allowed to use any um, artificial fertilizers. So the decision was taken to make Hook and Son an organic farm, out of necessity, really. This cost them £25,000 to convert the farm from non-organic to organic because of the extra cost in getting the materials and the fact that they couldn't produce as much milk at that time. So they tried to do this to add value to their product. Now, when they wanted to sell this product, um, they were trying to find a market for it. So they got together with seven other local organic milk producers and banded together to approach uh, a local supermarket, Budgeons, to provide their organic milk. And um, they put together their price. And unfortunately, they were beaten on price by Dairy Crest. So even though they were lovely, organic, local farmers who had a really good history and story behind their product, Budgeons bought on price. A difficult lesson to learn that the milk market is a commodity market and it is mainly bought on price. So Hook and Sons had to start looking for a different way to sell their milk. And they came across the idea in 2007 of selling raw milk. Now, Raw milk is milk which just comes straight from the cow. It is just chilled down and sold on. It has a numerous health benefits and reasons to drink it. And if you do some research about raw milk, you will find all out all about that. So they started by delivering it to local people on a milk round. So they have milk rounds in the local towns of Hailsham and Brighton and um, Eastbourne and places like that. And then people started to contact Hook and Sons. They had a small website, not one that sold, but one where people could inquire, uh, could just look at the products. And they had someone from London come down and buy a load of raw milk and they came down on Christmas Eve. And suddenly they realized that people really put a value on their organic milk, oh, sorry, raw milk. So they then researched it and found that they could courier out milk to anywhere in the country and they will charge two pounds per pint to have it couriered. This means if we go to a supermarket, we can buy four pints for one pound. They were charging two pints, two pounds for one pint. It was of great value to people. And today they send out 3,000 um, pints of milk a week via couriers. It's incredible. They've since expanded their market to London food places. So they go to farmers markets, just like Borough Market. Research that. Have a look at this. This is where the picture comes from, where they sell their milk 
to London people. Now they say that over half of their customers may come from overseas. And the reason is that they discovered that say for instance, Euro Eastern European customers, they like to sour their milk and raw milk because can naturally um, naturally sour itself. Whereas the pasteurized milk we get in shops is unable to do that. So they stumbled across another gap in the market, which they're continuing to talk to their customers and find out where they want it. So lots of sports people use this milk because it's such a fantastic food. Lots of people with digestive problems and skin conditions like eczema use this milk because it actually really helps their um, um, health. So they also sell it in Selfridges or did sell it in Selfridges for a small amount of time. And this got loads of coverage in the press for them. Selfridges reckoned it was in the Times, it was in the Sun, I think. And they Selfridges reckoned the press coverage got them over £250,000 worth of advertising spend in, in, in publicity, which is incredible. Now, they are a small family business. When you deal with Hook and Sons, it you the people are by name. You feel you're you're purchasing part of the Sussex countryside. They have fabulous customer service. You talk to real people who understand the product and are involved in the manufacture of it. Now, farming is a really, really difficult business to be in. Farmers find it really tough. The weather can affect them. We've had a really dry summer in 2018. It cuts down on the grazing. You have to give more food. We had a really wet winter in 2018. It's been a pretty difficult year for all farmers. This can really affect how much you can produce and therefore how much you can sell. Being, If you rely on being a commodity in milk, unlike Hook and Sons who's gone away from that, you can find out that you know, people buy on price and supermarkets want milk to be cheap. So they're continually putting pressure on farmers to make it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Now. This is part of the research that we need to do. If you continue listening, we'll be looking at other aspects of Hook and Sun and how you can use it in your coursework. We've looked at some things you could include in your assignment, but what else should you be including? Let's have a think. So we need to be able to comment on whether they have physical location, whether it's online or whether it's both. We need to consider whether the business is a sole trader, partnership or a private limited company and how those things will affect the business. We need to consider the number of employees they have. What are their aims and objectives? What really do they want to achieve by having this business? Do they have a wider ethical responsibility with their business? Do they take account of the environment by when they're running the business? What social trends have affected the business and in what way? And what political influences are there on how the business is being run? Raw milk has very strict rules about how it can be sold. The only way that Hook and Son can sell their milk is direct for the farm. And this has influenced how it is sold. They do deliveries to local people's houses. That is direct from the farm. They have online sales. You can order it via their website. That is direct from the farm. They go to the farmers markets in London, again, direct from the farm. As I said previously, they did sell it in Selfridges. And the way that they tried to get around the law on this was to sell it through a vending machine, which yeah, was a little bit dubious, but it definitely has affected how they can sell their milk can't be sold in local shops. We can't pop down to our corner shop and get some raw milk. So it's quite difficult for them to reach their customers. Um, when the business started out, it was started by Phil as a sole trader. His son, Steve, joined him and they formed a partnership, a 50-50 partnership in the business. Now they have plans for the future. They're going to be building a farm shop. They're going to be building a tea room. They're doing some really big, expansive ideas. They're thinking about putting like a Tough Mudder course on the farm. Now, the plans for this is to change some of the ownership. The farm itself 
would stay as a partnership between Phil and Steve, but the tea room, the production, the marketing, the farm shop would become a private limited company. They need extra investment from outside to get so uh, get this out up and going. So they're using crowdfunding to attract people to buy a share in the business so they can use that money to expand the business, which is a really, really interesting idea. Now, this business was in 2007, just had a couple of people working there. Today it's expanded to 20 people. So 20 local people are employed in this business. We imagine how many people they might have in the future with the farm shop and the tea run and the mud run. Um, it's going to be quite a large business. Now, I would say that Hook and Son is a particularly ethical business. They are organic. They look after the land. They are not polluting the land. They are keeping a beautiful environment, which is of special scientific interest. Profitable, used, but perfect. They deliver their milk in glass bottles, which are recyclable. They collect them, they wash them, they reuse them. They do, however, send their milk in the couriers in plastic bottles like you would see from the supermarket. This is to do with weight and obviously it costs a lot more to use glass bottles. So they definitely do have an ethical view of their business. Now their aim is a family business. Steve has four sons who he would like to have the opportunity for them to come and make their living in the same way that him and his father have. Yes, they really want to make profit. You don't make profit, you can't pay yourself and you can't expand. However, it's probably not the only motivating factor. They are really keen to expand at the moment and they're very keen to diversify um, to give themselves long-term safety. If something goes wrong, like I said with 2018 with the weather, then they need something that they can fall back on. So by having the farm shop, they will have other products that they can be selling. By having the mud run, they will have other products they can sell. So they have aims and objectives of growth, diversification, but also providing a long-term family business. But Hook Farm have also been affected by quite a lot of social trends. There's a slow food movement, which is about food being produced in old-fashioned, very environmentally friendly, really high quality food. That's a really big movement that has affected the popularity of Hook Farm. Using food for health benefits is a really quite common. We're always being told about superfoods, aren't we? And very much Hook Farm and their raw milk have hatched onto that and their milk is advertised in a way that can contribute to um, healing eczema and things like that. And Steve did say part of their diversification is partly because of political things. As next year, 2019, we will be leaving the EU in March. Historically, the EU have given subsidies to farmers like Steve just for using the land for farming. Now, when we leave the EU, these subsidies will probably finish. So they farmers have need to be looking at how on earth they can get different revenue streams into their business. So because they will no longer be able to rely on subsidies for part of their income, businesses like Steve are now getting in diversification. Like I said before, the farm shop, the tea room, the mud run, these are all things which Steve is considering because of political factors and because of his aims and because of the vulnerability for his business. So the outside influences really affect how this business is run.